Uh, I woke up one morning in January, like the first part of January, with an immense headache, and it never went away. Um, so I went to a couple doctors. Uh, they thought I had a sinus infection. Went through about three misdiagnoses, and then uh, went to the hospital, and uh, they admitted me because I had a fever, and they thought they knew what I had, so they did a lumbar puncture in the hospital and uh, admitted me. And they thought that I had valley fever. It took about three days to confirm. And then I was in the hospital for about seven days. Got out, was out for about 18 hours, and went back after that again, and was there for a total of almost five weeks. Oh, a little shocked. Yeah. I mean, you know, born and raised in Bakersfield, everybody's familiar with valley fever. Uh, wasn't familiar with it being anything other than something that occurred in the lungs. Mm -hmm. Certainly wasn't familiar with uh, being a form of meningitis. And, uh, you know, surprised to learn that I was going to have to deal with it for the rest of my life. Yeah, I heard some, some stories, you know, it's, it's funny. As I was in the hospital. One of the nurses, her son, her 8-year-old, has, has valley fever very, very badly. Um, I was in there at one point. There was four people in my room, and three of us had valley fever. Wow. Wow. So it's not as uncommon as you'd think. And every time I talk to some, somebody, you know, I had valley fever. I was in the hospital for a month. Oh, you know, it's everybody that I tell this, somebody I know had valley fever. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's like, yeah, my uncle, my brother, I had it, something. So it's very, it actually is a very common diagnosis. But I'm still recovering. I'm still... Um, medications and... Still on medications. Um, I'm figuring, hoping the end of the year be somewhere close to normal. I, uh, the heat extremely affects me. Um, not able to do much around my house. I have almost three acres that I live on, mm -hmm. and I'm not able to do very much around there, so it's kind of hard to get anything done when you can't be outside. Uh, my wife thinks because we live on three acres. Right. We had that wet winter, and then uh, the next year, um, I, we, have an, we have a small riding arena, and I was disking that and uh, kicked up a lot of dust, and uh, she thinks that that's how I got it, but her guess is as good as any. Right. Uh, you know, I wanted to do something to help with the awareness, and it just seems you can either become a victim or an advocate, and I chose to become an advocate rather than a victim. I think that people should realize that it truly is a danger, you know. Uh, the lady that checked me in here today, her husband passed away from valley fever. Uh, you know, I've seen people with, with permanent disabilities and things like that from valley fever. It's, it's, it's real, and it affects people and families we have the chance to do something about it. There are actually projects in the works for vaccines and things like that. And if, if we had some support, possibly something could be done and nobody else's children would have to get it, no more adults would have to get it. But we're gonna have to do it on a local basis because it's a regional, it's a regional issue and I, we're not gonna get a lot of support from the federal government.